What's up? Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna be going over a few hands. X is making a return in this video. He's provided another interesting hand history for us to go over and learn from. And I also have two hands to go over as well. If you haven't done so already and you like poker related content, you should definitely subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. Let's get into the video right now. X is in late position. He is playing approximately 1.2K and he gets dealt pocket queens, under the gun one and middle position, both limp into the pot and the action is on X and he raises it up to $25 and the small blind makes the call for 25 and he covers X maybe by 100 or $150, so he covers slightly. And under the gun one and middle position both call as well. So we're gonna go off to this flop four ways. And the flop comes 10 deuce nine with a couple of hearts and a diamond. The action checks to X and he decides to place a bet for $75. And the small blind is hesitating a little bit here maybe five or 10 seconds, and he declares raise, and he bumps it up to 175. And under the gun one and middle position both get out of the way pretty quick, and it's back on X. And the first thing he mentions is that this guy's a recreational player. He's never seen the guy before, but he's been sitting with him for a half an hour or an hour. And in general, a bet sizing like this, in X's opinion, from a rec player is going to be a draw or something like that, kind of like maybe a top pair of seeing where they're at kind of thing. He thought that if this guy had like a set or two pairs or something that's crushing him, he would raise much larger to protect his hand. So that being said, um, he doesn't know for sure what kind of draw this guy has. He's thinking it's probably like a flush draw or maybe a straight draw. He is also thinking like he doesn't know for sure what turn cards he needs to be afraid of or so X decides to move in for $1,175 approximately, and he doesn't want to face any tough turn decisions, and he thinks this is the best play because he said he's 95% sure that this guy has some sort of a draw, and he feels that he's a favorite. So let's get the money in and run the cards. Uh, it doesn't take the small blind very long, maybe a second or two, and he calls off. And we're going to the river, heads up, and all the action is closed. Turn comes off a jack of spades and the river, a deuce of clubs. X turns his cards over and puts them on the table. And the small blind takes a look and pretty quickly he tables 8-7 of hearts for the straight to the jack. Uh, when X told me the hand history, I said, did you hit a king on the river? And he says, no. We could have re-sucked there, but X just couldn't get it done. I think, I think maybe I would have got it done. Maybe. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this hand. And if you think anything should have been done differently or could have been done differently, uh, my thoughts, I kind of think we should have just called the flop and reassessed the turn. We have position. We're closing the action. I don't really see any other option but just calling. And definitely if the guy is bluffing or overplaying top pair or something, like he's just going to dig his hole even deeper on the turn if he doesn't hit something on us. So I prefer a call because of that reason that it keeps bluffs in and that we can just kind of like try to pot control and he's probably going to give us some information on the turn because he's going to be up first and he's going to have to bet or check or whatever and then we can definitely get a better read on the turn based on how big he bets and his body language whatever so i mean that's my thoughts but I'd, we'd love to hear yours both x and i so put them in the comments below let's get into the next hand All right, this next hand is from me. <laughs> I played this hand. Uh, it was over at Motor City Casino a little while back. We're in the cutoff. We've been playing for a while, uh, maybe three, four hours into a session. And we have $900, and we get dealt 9-7 of hearts. One of my favorite hands to have in late position. So uh, the action folds to us. We come in for raise, $20. And the button folds, and the small blind and the big blind both call. Uh, they both cover us. Small blind is kind of fitter fold post flop. Not, don't really know too much about this guy, but he's been staying pretty quiet over there. And the big blind is a recreational player, and he has his chips all on a weird wall and whatever. I don't know. He's playing more money than we are, probably at least $1,400, I would estimate. So we're off to the flop three ways, and the flop comes king, queen, three, rainbow. 
and both of our opponents check the action to us. Decide to start out with bet here because we don't even have a heart on board. We have nine high. Uh, this is a pretty good board to at least attempt to see bet. So that being said, place bet for $30 and the small blind folds and the big blind makes call. As soon as he does so, he announces that he checks dark for the turn. So that's interesting little tidbit. Uh, most of the time when recreational players do this, they have a marginal hand and they're trying to just get to showdown or whatever. So uh, we're off to the turn, heads up, and the turn comes an eight of hearts. <laughs> so at least we we hit a heart now. That's kind of cool. And we still don't have any, any draw though. <laughs> so so uh, the dude has already checked. And considering my read, I don't think this guy has a very good hand, so we're going to just apply a little more pressure here and try to get this dude off of his hand. And I uh, decided to bet $115. And the guy in the big blind does hesitate a little bit. And it definitely looks like he's debating whether he should even call or not. And ultimately he does announce call, and he moves the chips over the line and makes the call. And once again, he checks dark for the river. And I'm just thinking, like... Okay, I feel like this guy has like a queen or jack 10. If we get like a brick river or whatever, that I'm probably going to bet again. So, <laughs> uh, that being said, heads up to the river and it is an offsuit five. Uh, we decide to place another bet for $300 and I think it'll be pretty difficult to call with second pair or a misdraw and we can't even beat jack 10. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm not going to check and let Jack-10 beat us. By the time I look up from moving the chips, the opponent in the big blind is just staring at me. He's like in the three seat, and I'm in the, the eight. He just says, I already called you. What do you got? And he called me so fast, I didn't even realize he called because he just flipped the, you know, one chip call into the pot when I was looking down to like place my bet. So we snap open the nine high, and definitely know that's not going to be winning. And the dude looks at it for... Three Mississippis, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And then he tables queen five offsuit for two pair. And he's obviously <laughs> going to scoop this hand, this pot, whatever. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about this hand. I think if the guy wasn't, like, giving away, like, indicators that he had a weak hand, I wouldn't have, like, just tried to barrel him off of it. But it really backfired. I, I found myself thinking right after the hand, like, would he have still called if he didn't hit a two pair on a river? You know, I... I don't know if he would have been able to call. Like, would he? Did he just think I had nothing? Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. We just passed the 5,000 subscriber mark. I'm pretty happy about that. That's pretty cool that 5,000 people clicked the button to subscribe to my channel, and that means that at least somebody likes my content. It's pretty cool. I'm happy about that. So I know I've been scarce the past few weeks. And that's because I've been busy. You know, I told you that I'm going to be writing a book. And it's just taking up a lot of my time. And I just want to thank you guys again for being so supportive. Uh, let's get back into the video. We are in the small blind. We have $472 and we get dealt 10-8 offsuit. <laughs> and by the time the action reaches us, there is three limpers. And all of these guys pretty much play every hand. And they're playing really loose. And they're passive. So decide to come in for a raise here, uh, just to try to squeeze. We bump it up to $22 and the action folds pretty quickly to the dude in middle position. And this guy is a recreational player. I've been seated with him for a few hours now and he's pretty much playing every single hand pre-flop and he's folding a lot of turns and rivers. So that being said, uh, he makes the call for 22 and the gentleman in the cutoff He's going to be all in for $21, so we have a $2 side pot. And we're off to the flop, heads up for the side pot, but three ways. And the flop comes Jack 9 5, Rainbow. So this is a pretty good flop for 10 8, in my opinion. Definitely going to start out with a bet here. Uh, I place a bet for $45, and Middle Position makes a call after deliberating for just a couple of seconds, pretty quickly. And we're going to go off to the turn. The turn comes a four of spades. So I'm looking down the table at the dude, and he's like in the exact opposite seat as I am. You know, he's in the three, and I'm in the seven. 
And it looks like he's playing a, a little over 200. You know, he's got like a couple of red chips on top or something. And I decide to, you know, just put this guy to the test. I think like the best kind of hand that he's ever going to have here is like some kind of mediocre or weak jack. And he might have a nine or a five. Like he's he's pretty liberal with his flop calls from what I've seen. And we decide to just jam. So we move in and the dude goes into the tank and... You know, now he's kind of like sat back and he's, I can see his chips. It's around 215, a couple of white or something. After quite a little while, at least a full minute, he, he does like kind of grab his chips and move them, and, you know, slide them forward and indicating a call. So we're off to the river three ways and all the action is closed for a significant side pot here. And the river comes a 10 of clubs. So we do actually make pair status. And that's pretty interesting. However, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get it done here. So uh, snap open the 10-8 offsuit, put it on the table, and the gentleman in middle position takes quite a long look at it. Incidentally, the dude in the cutoff mucks his hand. And after about three or four seconds, the dude in the middle position realizes that he has the best hand, and he tables jack six of spades. So he's going to scoop this one up here. Uh, he made a pretty good call on the turn. He was right. Uh, I think if he wouldn't have turned a spade draw, he probably would have folded that. But I mean, I just don't know for sure. It's just speculation. Yeah, he did. He had a pretty big turn card, so I, I wouldn't expect him to fold that. But uh, we just couldn't get it done. Seven queen was nowhere to be found. You're supposed to drill them shits in pots like this, but just can't, couldn't get it done. So anyways, uh, let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Uh, I think it's kind of spewy pre-flop, but considering what my opponents are playing, is it really? I don't know. <laughs> uh, drop me some comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And don't forget to head over to my website. I sell t-shirts and hoodies over there that look like this uh, to support my efforts here at my channel. And also I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching packages for players that are having trouble beating one, two, one, three, just to help you develop a thought process. It's been very helpful for the players I've coached so far. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. I have one, three vlogs, one, two vlogs, two, five vlogs. I even have a five, 10 vlog. And I have a crash course for people trying to beat one, two and one, three in the limit hold'em. It's pretty basic, but a lot of people have found it really helpful. Definitely check that out as well. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.